Ah, so uh, welcome to our demo today. Uh, my name is Jun, um, pre-sales uh, solutions architect uh, from Ixia. And then uh, really nice to see you everyone in the room. Um, Today, in this demo session, we're going to use a, a Mellanox uh, Spectrum switch uh, and, uh, with a Cumulus NOS uh, and then validate uh, um, the um, uh, eVPN functionality in both asymmetric mode and uh, symmetric mode. Before we jump onto the demo, I want to briefly uh, mention about uh, um, demo topology. So in this demo topology, as you can see, uh, we have the Spectrum lip switch and uh, that is connected to the one of the Ixia ports to the bottom. Uh, that, that port is emulating the uh, server. And then uh, with the VLAN ID 101 to 132. On the right hand side, we have the, um, uh, another Ixia port that is emulating all these eVPN environments, including the spine switch. Uh, behind of the spine switch, we have all the leap switches and also mapping VNIs. Um, of course, the spine switch is having an eBGP connection to the uh, Melanox switch. And then uh, uh, in this demo, we have the VNI number one through one, th uh, VNI number one through 32. <coughs> Any question on the topology? No? Okay. So uh, we are back to the Ixia GUI. This is the IX network GUI. And then uh, we are currently using two ports in this GUI. Uh, one is the 10 gig port, and the other one is 100 gig port. 10 gig is the host port uh, emulating the servers. And then 100 gig is connected to the um, Mellanox um, 100 gig uplink port and then emulating the eVPN environment. Let's move to the scenario view. Um, in the scenario view, as we already saw from the demo topology, um, it, it, it gives a visual representation of the current uh, configuration. And on the left hand side, we have the bare metal servers. And then on the right hand side, we have an eVPN configuration, including the lip spine, uh, VTAB IPs, host VM emulations. I'll point a few things on the BGP configurations, uh, but before we do that, I just want to mention a little bit on the um, address scheme. The address scheme that we are using here, uh, uh, especially for the um, MAC addresses, I'll just uh, make it like a 32 here. And uh, um, the address scheme we are having, uh, having here is the um, zero, zero, starting with 00, 12, 01. Uh, this is the uh, bare metal side uh, server uh, MAC address. We're going to see this MAC address on the EVGP, uh, EVPN uh, route advertisement. And then if we see that the same MAC address from the Ixia side as a learned information, uh, typed as a type 2 route, means that uh, uh, it's working fine. It has the mapping uh, VLAN ID from 101 through 132. On the right hand side, it's the same thing. It, it has the same matching uh, configuration. Uh, it has its own uh, MAC address pool and also the, uh, has the same subnet IP address. The only difference is a uh, bare metal server has the dot .100 IP and then on the right hand side uh, uh, host VM has the dot .200 IP. Same subnet. VLAN 101 to 132. Okay? And uh, uh, the VTAB IPs is all the, um, the top of the rack VTAB IPs. Uh, 9.9.9.101 to the 132. It's simple, straightforward. Okay. Any questions on the topology? It's good. Okay. We'll jump onto the uh, BGP configuration, and then I'll point out a few things, a uh, few important things here. Um, sorry, oh, I should <coughs> here. Uh, the one thing is, as we already mentioned, that this is an eBGP session, so we have the type external, as you can see there. And then uh, local AS number for the uh, XCI is a 200. Uh, Cumulus Mellanox has a 100. So this is an eBGP session. And I'll, I'll move to the uh, eVPN tab. And currently, we are running asymmetric mode. Uh, later in the demo, we'll change this to the symmetric. Under the EVI, uh, we have the, this uh, uh, route target. Value. We purposely map this with a VLAN ID, so it's a lot easier to see. And then also, Cumulus also required this. Um, and and then lastly, in the uh, um, uh, MAC address, the CMAC properties, we have the layer two VNI 101, and also layer three VNI 101. It's mapping exactly the same because it's a symmetric mode. 
Okay, so this is good enough to, uh, configuration. Uh, and then let's move to the cumulus real quick and then see if it has run the route uh, correctly. So we're going to type net show BGP eVPN uh, route. Uh, instead of printing out uh, all the route, I'll just pick uh, one single VNI, one-on-one. -on -one. And as you can see, uh, it has its own MAC address advertising correctly. And also, it has the uh, MAC address from the Ixia end. But would it be possible to zoom in at all on that? Oh, um, sure. Let me try. I'm not 18 anymore. <laughs> Try that one, actually. I'll Thank you. Does it work? Um, the zoom. I thought it should work. Um, the Control Plus or Art Plus. Let me actually change it. If not, don't don't burn the time you've got. But uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, it's um, That's right. yeah. yeah. Right now, maybe I should um, push on the font size. Push on. Hopefully, um, so yeah, it shows uh, um, it shows the MAC address correctly, um, and and the host IP address, and also the VTAP IP address correctly displaying here. So it's working. Let's confirm same information from XCI uh, in the in the BGP stack protocol stack. Uh, we can uh, validate the learn information from here. Uh, the, it's already displaying here. And as you can see, we have learned the cumulus side uh, MAC address, the host MAC address correctly. It has dot hundred IP, which, which shows that cumulus has sent uh, correct uh, route information. And if I scroll to the right, uh, it has also uh, valid uh, um, L2 VNI information. So. This is a good uh, indication of everything's working as we expected. So we can jump onto the traffic side. In this uh, traffic uh, item, so we have two traffic items. One um, is, name is a C2I. C2 means, C2I means a cumulus to Ixia. And I2C means Ixia to cumulus. So by, basically we have a bi-directional traffic here. And the inter VNI means we are doing the VXL routing. Okay. Uh, and let me make sure that I regenerate the traffic. And uh, uh, we Just are running. One question: to... Which yes. packet size will the will you have here? Oh, uh, in this uh, current demo, we are using 128 bytes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, for the thanks, thank, thanks for the good uh, question. So we are using 128 bytes, and then uh, frame rate is uh, one gig on each uh, traffic item, so two gig. By direction of two gigs, uh, traffic rate. Yeah, just one this question is, on yeah. the uh, packet size. So uh, we actually tested uh, on the with the Cumulus OS. Uh, if you enable the jumbo frame, so we can actually have the packet size up to nine thousand some the jumbo jumbo frame size. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy just change here, and uh, you know we, we can validate all different uh, packet size. Yes, um, as you can see in this demo. Um, you have the zero packet loss. Uh, we don't see any packet loss. And let's drill down per uh, flow step so we can see each feed and each VNI is having a correct behavior. If there is any traffic loss, we can actually drill down to all the VNI, VN uh, um, details. As you can see that from VN 101 to 132, we don't see any loss. Everything's working as expected. You may see this kind of screen uh, a lot in the POC. Um, so one question regarding the payload. Is this just bulk data that you fill up, or um, uh, what do you have there? Uh, what was the, your question again? The payload that you are sending. Uh, the payload. Uh, let, let me actually open yeah. the... Yeah. Let me answer that question. So currently, what we are building is really with the VXLAN encapsulation, because from the XR emulated the VTAP, we send it to the uh, the manual cumulus switch, right? So we have the, you know, kind of outer is just Ethernet IP, and you have VXLAN encapsulation, and the inner you have Ethernet IP. So that's it. So it's kind of by default because all this encapsulation and the IP is mandatory. Now, if you want to add a more realistic payload, you're saying, I want to add a TCP, I want to add a UDP. So we do have an option. When you build the traffic, you can add additional, you know, header there. Okay. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So the answer is at the moment we are doing just bulk data, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, for now, let me stop the um, configuration real quick here. And uh, um, let me go back to the cumulus. Uh, since we validated the uh, symmetric is working, uh, we're going to uh, switch the configuration to the symmetric mode. Uh, in order to do that, I'll, we already actually took the snapshot of the cumulus router. Uh, as you can see from the snapper list, we have uh, captured the uh, symmetric Just mode. Also, one question regarding sure. here, Melinox. Do you expect any difference in symmetric or asymmetric mode? Or do you think from the ASIC perspective should be identically? From, from our ASIC perspective, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, so for, for our ASIC, um, it'll be identical whether you're doing um, VNI to VLAN or VNI to VNI. Um, but there's many of uh, the competing solutions out there that you can either do one or you can do the other. And for us, it, it usually means there's, there's one, say, brand C vendor, and they only do one. And so our customers want to make sure we interoperate with them. But other customers, they have uh, some other brand, and they only do the other style of, of uh, VXN routing. And so having that flexibility um, is kind of, it's more about um, First, the switch ASIC does have to support both ways because some people, when they were reading up on how to do VXLAN and routing, they said, well, they assumed it'll work one way, and so they only support one way. But um, uh, the big thing for us was having Cumulus add that functionality into their um, operating system because the control plane really had to set it up as well. So our expectation levels here to have kind of the same output yeah, in both modes, yeah? That is the, the expectation, yeah. Okay. And I'll add in, from the Cumulus side, we've actually done interop testing with Cisco, with Juniper, with Arista. Um, each of the vendors kind of leads with one version or another. And so what we see in the marketplace is customers having a, having a preference or an existing incumbent vendor, and they're saying, look, uh, Cumulus is cool. We'd love to use you. You have to work with what we have. And so you know, we've been able to work with Mellanox to have a chip that can support both without any side effects and building software that supports both without side effects. It is there. So meanwhile, we're um, I'm, I'm changing the configuration to the changing back to the uh, symmetric mode. Uh, previously, it was is uh, asymmetric. So uh, give me one second. Uh, we just need to change. So this is the point. Uh, uh, it used to be just L2 VNI for the routing and switching both, right? Uh, but now we're going to have this uh, uh, layer 3 VNI. We have chosen the value as 2020. Uh, layer 2 VNI, we're going to keep the same, same value. So we change the labor space, L23 VNI. Uh, in the BGP configuration, uh, we changed, uh, let, me, let me see. Yeah, we changed uh, uh, EVVN configuration to the symmetric mode. And also uh, on the EVI configuration, we have enabled the uh, um, Layer three uh, loud target separately advertising, and and that is mapping with uh, this uh, uh, two zero two zero RT value. So everything's ready to go. So I'll just run it again. And once uh, every protocol comes up, uh, we'll be able to validate that the loud information has been learned from both XSI side and the cumulus side, uh, cumulus melanox side. Okay. So switch came up. Same procedure, uh, we're going to check the, um, uh, if the Cumulus configuration has uh, um, L3 VNI correctly. And as you can see, it has a VNI 2020 uh, in the configuration. So we have wrote the correct configuration and also uh, all the uh, VLAN information also mapped correctly. Uh, let's check uh, um, Nesho BGP. Uh, EVPN route. Also, I'm going to pick the VNI 101. And as, as you can see, that with the symmetric mode, it's still on the correct information from XS side. Everything's in there correctly. Let's validate the same information from XIA. Uh, Q 
Cumulus has an advertiser route. And uh, if we go to the um, XCR learned information and refresh the, this value, and we also see the correct MAC address, IP, and scroll to the right, we have the, all the L3 VNIs correctly uh, learned from the Cumulus. This means we are ready to run the traffic. Let's run the traffic. Uh, before we run the traffic again, uh, we should uh, refresh this uh, traffic item with the regenerate button. Uh, it will run the, uh, all the v new VNI information. And then I will run the traffic and see if there is any traffic loss or um, Any questions so far? Is such a straightforward? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, I've been lucky enough to use one of these before, but. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so some of it's obvious to me. Yes. So yeah, again, uh, we don't have any packet loss. Everything's going up and running. Uh, if we go to the flow statistics, it has per VN statistics shows the good values, and this time it's a different because uh, it has the VNI information as two zero two zero. Uh, since it is uh, L3 VNI we are using. Let, let me show you a little bit on the packet capture side and then validate the packet uh, capture. So we can select this data path, uh, capture the packet just for a short time, and open up the packet capture. Did I click? Yeah, I clicked it. And we see a bunch of the uh, VXN uh, uh, packet with the VXN header. As you can see, that VNI value is 2020. And then destination MAC is definitely uh, not the host MAC because it's, we purposely built, uh, mapped with the IP address 113. It's a hex, so it's showing like that. So this definitely shows that this VXN symmetric mode, uh, EVPN symmetric mode is working correctly on the Melon switch with the Cumulus NOS. Um, it, Wrapping up, um, if we in the future, if we need to um, need to scale up, uh, basically we will put like numbers like uh, maybe ten thousand or whatever, so we can stress uh, boxes in the future. And then same thing on the right hand side for the VXN uh, EVPN configuration. Um, this is end of the demo, and uh, if you have any other questions, I can answer you. Yeah. Um, you. So earlier we were talking about doing some research mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of storage and things like that. Uh, does AC offer a product that, that kind of has that, uh, the ability to test and verify the storage network is communicating with the servers? And mm. So, so we, do, we do have some storage test solution, but not in this IX network product. So this is mainly the network infrastructure test. We also have a layer four, layer seven, which you know the IX load and the breaking point. So IX load has some uh, storage test solution. Yeah, okay. so basically IX network product is layer two, two three, three validation mainly product, focus like on, yeah. BGP, OSPF, uh, like all LAG, new technology. You know, LACP, all these kind of, uh, and also like some SDM protocols as well. But if we think about the layer four, seven protocols, like could be HTTP, you know, any, any type of like layer four, seven, that we have a different product line to cover that area. Right. Thank you. Sure. And um, thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you.